Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about other important neonatal problem which is in neonatal sepsis. At the end of this lecture, you will understand the neonatal sepsis better and you will know why neonates are more liable to have sepsis due to their defect in defense mechanisms. And also you will know the risk factors for this problem. Of course, diagnosis and the treatment is also important. So these points are objective of lecture of today. We have three cases. Let to hear first case. 36 hours old in unit was presented with respiratory distress. He was tachypneic. The respiratory rate was 70 breaths per minute. His temperature was 36.5 degrees centigrade. The mother mentioned that he didn't feed for more than six hours. So, what is a possible diagnosis or what is a possible cause behind this presentation? What are positive points that are present in history? And lastly, how can you confirm the diagnosis? The answers will be left to the end of the lecture. Now, we will present the case number two. 25 years old primary mother. She came to delivery room after having labor pain. Gestational age was 35 weeks. She delivered vaginally after 20 hours rupture of membranes. The newborn needed resuscitation by oxygen and suction, but he started feeding two hours later. One day after that, he had developed dyspnea and tachypnea with lethargy and poor feeding. What is a possible cause for this presentation? And what are the risk factors that are present in this case? Now, case number three. Eight days old in unit was delivered vaginally. He was bottle fed. He was well until one day before presentation when he started to develop jaundice and poor feeding. On examination, he had abdominal distension and head was retracted back. Anterior fontanel was bulging. What is a possible diagnosis? After investigation, what could be positive in this lab test? And what is a possible etiology? Don't forget to answer these questions at the end of the lecture. Now, we will start talking about neonatal infections. A neonatal infection is a very important subject, very important problem common in our country. The time of highest risk in childhood for acquiring serious infection is a neonatal period. A neonate is more vulnerable, more likely to have infections than other age groups. And two types of infection, early and late onset sepsis, according to time of occurrence. Another significance of this problem is coming from its presence and the incidence of this problem is around 
of infants have infection in first month of their life and this frequency of infection is more among developing countries the overall incidence of neonatal sepsis ranges from 1 to 5 cases per 1000 live birth globally neonatal sepsis and other severe infections were responsible for 430,000 neonatal deaths this is in 2013 and this is important figure so it is again important cause of mortality not only morbidity and it accounts for 15 percent of all neonatal deaths so from this slide we can conclude that neonatal sepsis is important and significant problem to be studied and known uh, we want to know now why in unit is more liable to have infections than other group of age in children this is because there is defi defect deficiency in their immunity and both types of immunity are affected non-specific and a specific one regarding non-specific immunity the problem is with the skin the skin is softer and more easily damaged in a unit another point in non-specific immunity is in the function of phagocyte and polymorph nuclear neutrophil there is decrease in their opsonization the units are less able to concentrate inflammatory cells at the site of infection. The complement system is low in this age group. In relation to specific immunity, which is also affected, both types, cellular and humoral immunity, are affected. Cellular immunity, the neonatal natural killer lymphocytes, have decreased cytotoxic activity in relation to humoral immunity there is a problem or defect in their immunoglobulin the new net cannot synthesize immunoglobulin early in life ig immunoglobulin g type is a small in size can cross placenta from mother but IgA, IgM are larger in size. They don't cross placenta. By three months of age, the infant begins to synthesize significant amount of IgG, IgM, and IgA. So, in the neonatal period, there is deficiency in the amount of immunoglobulins. So, as a conclusion, immunity is affected both specific and non-specific now we will talk about types of neonatal infection either congenital infections or acquired infection this lecture will concentrate on acquired infection but we will have short idea about congenital infections the mother is susceptible to certain pathogen to certain pathogens she may acquire acute infections and she can transmit this microorganism through placenta to the fetus the results of this infection that transmitted from the mother to the fetus either will end by abortion a stillbirth or baby with congenital anomalies or baby with intrauterine growth retardation or premature baby sometimes the baby was delivered with acute disease in the neonatal period and sometimes the baby is asymptomatic but he has persistent infection with 
neurologic sequelae later in his life. An example of these infections are cytomegalovirus, rubella, toxoplasma gondii, triponema, polydam, and herpes. You can see in this slide or in this picture fetus and placenta. This is a placenta and how can the infection uh, transmitted from placenta to the fetus. As I mentioned, today we will concentrate on acquired infection. The acquired infection either perinatal or postnatal. Perinatal, either intrapartum or ascending. This is acquired just before or during delivery. And example for bacteria responsible for this type of infection is a group B streptococcal infection and also E. coli. Postnatal means postpartum or nosocomial. It can uh, be a result from environmental exposure in the hospital or in the community. Uh, we have this classification according to the time. We have two types, early infection and late infection. Early mean in the early neonatal period, in the first week of life, less than seven days after birth. Some textbook mention less than three days of life. But what we used to say it is in the first seven days of life. How can early infection occur? The bacteria have ascended from the birth canal and invaded the amniotic fluid. We know that the fetus is secondarily infected because the fetal lungs are in direct contact, contact with infected amniotic fluid. This infant will develop pneumonia and secondary septicemia and bacteremia. And the etiology of early infection, the bacteria are many types like group B streptococcal, E. coli, coagulase negative staphylococcus, Haemophilus influenza, and Listeria monocytogenes. When we are facing baby or neonat with infection in history, we need to concentrate on the factors that are associated with infection or the factors that can predispose to this infection. These factors, again, either to related to the labor and fetus or in unit or may be related to the mother. Labor and in unital factors include prolonged rupture of membrane, more than 18 hours, meconium staining lichen, difficult or traumatic or instrumental delivery, like using forceps or vantus. When the baby delivered with asphyxia, low Apgar score, less than six at one or five minutes. When the baby is in need for resuscitation, oxygen, suction, endotracheal, and so on, whatever the resuscitation is. It means he didn't cry immediately after delivery. Or when the baby was delivered with low birth weight, less than 0.25 kg, or when he was delivered with low gestational age, premature, less than 37 weeks of gestation, or baby with congenital anomalies. Those babies are risky to develop early infection. Sometimes the factors, the risk factors related to the mother, like when she has 
colonization, vaginal colonization with the group B streptococcal and genital infection like herpes simplex virus or she has fever during labor or she has maternal urinary tract infection in the third, in the third trimester poor antenatal care, poor maternal nutrition, low socioeconomic status, all these associated with an increased occurrence of early infection. The mother who gave history of recurrent abortion and maternal substance abuse like alcohol or other drugs can also associate this problem with early infection. In the following slides, you will see some babies who are exposed to risk of early infection. This picture showing baby who was delivered with asphyxia and he was intubated by this team group. He has a birth asphyxia. Another risk factor when the baby has fetal distress and the evidence for fetal distress is presence of meconium staining lichen. This baby you can see he has head lag and he is floppy because of asphyxia. This is another picture for instrumental delivery. This baby needs van tools during labor, during delivery. This is another baby who is risky to develop early infection, premature baby who was delivered before 37 weeks of gestation. And this picture show infants with intrauterine growth retardation. See this picture, they have the loose of subcutaneous uh, fat and they look smaller than their age group. Now, uh, what we mean by late onset in neonatal sepsis? We mentioned that this classification is according to time of occurrence of infection. When the infection occurs at or more than seven days of age, called late onset, due to many types of bacteria like coagulase negative staphylococci, staph aureus, E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Enterobacter, Candida, Group B streptococcal, Seratia, Acentinobacter, and Anaerobes. Again, the risk factors may be associated with late onset sepsis and some of these risk factors are again premature baby, the baby who needs some instrumentation during care in the neonatal care unit like central venous catheterization, especially when it was used more than 10 days, when the baby is in need for CPAP continuous positive pressure ventilation which need nasal cannula or he need other diagnostic and therapeutic procedures uh, even if these procedures are uh, simple like IV cannula or nasal gastric tube. Bottle feeding is a risk factor for late infection. Poor hand washing during dealing with the new net also a risk factor and baby with GIT pathology again is a risk factor and here in this slide you can see many babies who have risk factors for late sepsis like premature baby, baby who need nasal cannula for CPAP, baby with intrauterine growth retardation and this is baby need nasal cannula for CPAP again. Uh, now we will discuss uh, clinical features of neonatal sepsis. Every system can be affected by sepsis 
and symptoms may relate to any systems. You can see generally you may found baby with fever or temperature instability, sometimes uh, cold. Uh, they are not doing well. Uh, they have poor feeding. Uh, also, they may develop edema. Or the symptoms may relate it to, to, to cardiovascular system in form of pallor, mottling of skin, cold, tachycardia, hypotension, and bradycardia. Uh, the symptoms may relate to central nervous system like irritability, lethargy, tremor, seizures, hyperreflexia. This is baby with moral reflex. When the CNS system is affected, he may lose this moral reflex. He may have hypotonia. He may have abnormal moral reflex, as I mentioned. He may have irregular respirations due to affection of the respiratory center. Or he may have high-pitched cry. Many cases of uh, sepsis are associated with meningitis. They will have tense and bulging anterior fontanelle. And they may have head retraction, what we call it, opus tetanus. Other systems can be affected in sepsis, like respiratory system. They may present with apnea, dyspnea, tachypnea, chest retractions, flaring of alinezai, grunting, and cyanosis. GIT, gastrointestinal system, is also involved, and the unit may develop abdominal distension, vomiting, diarrhea, hepatomegaly, periambilical discharge, and jaundice. Renal system is also affected and they may have decrease in their urine output. And hematologic system is also involved by development of jaundice. On examination, we may find splenomegaly. They may have pallor, PTKI, purpura, and bleeding. Uh, diagnosis of neonatal sepsis is one of the important objectives in our lecture. And the diagnosis, as in every case, started from history. In history, we will concentrate on a specific risk factor risk factors that we mentioned in previous slide. And some of these risk factors are maternal infection during gestation or during labor, urinary tract infection, chorioamenonitis, maternal colonization with group B streptococci or Neisseria or herpes. When the new neonate has low gestational age, premature means, or low birth weight, he, ha he is a small for gestational age. Multiple births, twins, also are liable to have infections. Uh, when there is prolonged rupture of membrane more than 18 hours, when the delivery is complicated, and when the baby or a new unit is in need for medical intervention like vascular access, endotracheal intubation, and parental nutrition. So the first important item in the diagnosis is history taking. Of course, after history, we need to examine the baby and we want to be sure if other diseases are present or there are symptoms related to systems as mentioned in a previous slide. Uh, we, be sh we must be sure whether the baby has congenital malformation, like heart disease or a neural tube defect. We assess presence of respiratory distress. We need to look for signs of necro necrotizing enterocolitis. And 
whether the baby has metabolic disease like galactosemia. Also, we need to assess manifestation involved local or systemic disease like general appearance of the baby, neurologic status, abnormal vital signs. Again, we need to look again to the uh, clinical features of sepsis that are present in every system. So we need to examine every system. And there are a clinical criteria put by WHO in the program called Intermanagement of Childhood Illnesses, Integrated Management of Childhood Illnesses. And these criteria depend on what we mentioned, the clinical features in the systems of the unit, like convulsions or a drowsiness related to neurologic manifestations, bulging fontanel, respiratory system, respiratory rate more than 60 breaths per minute, it means tachypnea, granting, severe chest and drawing, and central cyanosis. Cardiac system, we need to assess whether there is poor perfusion, mottling of the skin means rapid and weak pulse. In the gastrointestinal system, we need to focus on presence of jaundice and whether the baby has poor feeding and abdominal distension. In relation to skin or dermatologic finding, we assess presence of a skin pustule, periambilical erythema, or and in the musculoskeletal system, we assess presence of edema or erythema, overlying bones or joints. And don't forget to measure body temperature. When it is more than 37.7 degrees centigrade, this is important. Or sometimes the new net is cold, less than 35 degrees centigrade. Uh, again, these uh, clinical criteria are put by WHO and everyone dealing with patients in units should know these uh, clinical criteria help in early diagnosis of neonatal sepsis. Of course the diagnosis need history we talked about history examination also ex examination was explained and now we want to focus on laboratory studies or findings by lab. We can uh, classify those findings, evidence of infection, uh, evidence of inflammation, and evidence of multi-organ system. Uh, regarding Evidence of infection, we need culture to assess the diagnosis and these cultures from a sterile site like blood or CSF. So blood culture is diagnostic. Also demonstration of microorganism in tissue like biopsy from some sites, although not commonly done, but it is diagnostic. Also we can diagnose uh, sepsis by PCR reaction, polymerase cell reaction. And sometimes, especially for congenital uh, infections, we need to do maternal or neonatal serology. The investigations which are rapid than cultures that are used for evidence of inflammation. And these investigations are form of complete blood picture. In complete blood picture, we concentrate on wide blood cell count. If there is leukocytosis, this is evidence for infection. The count alone is not, is not enough. We need to do immature over total count. This is ratio. When it is more than 20%, it is important, indicate presence of inflammation. Other findings in the complete blood count is thrombocytopenia, and sometimes related to white BC count, there is decrease in the count, not 
always increase in the count. Uh, other evidence of infection is positive C-reactive protein or increase in the ESR or presence of a procalcitonin. These are called acute phase reactant. Other investigation which is used for evidence of inflammation is cytokines, interleukin-6, interleukin-B, and tumor necrolysis factor. When features of meningitis are present, we need to do CSF examination. And sometimes sepsis is associated with DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. Here we will find fibrin degradation product and D-dimer. Other thing in lab findings, evidence of multi-organ system disease. We need to do blood gases analysis. We will find concentrate on pH and PCO2, pulmonary function, PO2 and PCO2, renal function, blood urea and serum creatinine, hepatic injury evidence by assessing liver enzymes, and partial thromboblastin time. And sometimes bone marrow function can help in presence of neutropenia and anemia and thrombocytopenia. There are many conditions in a unit can be similar in its manifestations to a neonatal sepsis. And these conditions may relate to many systems like cardiac system, cardiovascular system. Example, congenital heart disease, like hypoplastic left heart syndrome, or pulmonary hypertension. Sometimes acquired, not congenital infection, acquired, like myocarditis, hypovolemia. GIT, gastrointestinal system, can be affected by some diseases that are similar to neonatal sepsis, like necrotizing enterocolitis, spontaneous gastrointestinal perforation, and hepatic failure. That may occur in an uh, inborn error of metabolism. Other systems, also like hematologic, severe anemia, congenital leukemia, sometimes are similar to sepsis, metabolic condition, like hypoglycemia, adrenal problem, inborn error of metabolism. Other differential diagnosis for central nervous system problem, like intracranial hemorrhage, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, perinatal asphyxia means, and neonatal seizure. Respiratory conditions like respiratory distress syndrome and aspiration pneumonia also put in differential diagnosis of uh, in differential diagnosis of uh, uh, neonatal sepsis. Uh, of course, we need to focus on we need to focus on treatment of neonatal sepsis. And in every case, there is what we call empiric treatment. We will not wait for results of a blood culture. We will depend on what we mentioned in history, examination, rapid test, evidence, for example, evidence of inflammation. So we can start in the beginning with ampicillin plus garamycin or sometimes cephalosporin. But when the baby is come with late infection, after seven days of age, we can add treatment against staphylococcal infection, which is methicillin or cloxacillin or vancomycin plus gentamicin. 
Of course, from the beginning, we need to send for blood culture, and if, if results are obtained, we can change the antibiotic according to what we gain, what we have in the result. And the course of treatment, at least 10 to 14 days in sepsis, but when there the meningitis is associated with sepsis, the course need 14 to 21 days. This, what we call a specific treatment, drug therapy, antibiotic therapy. But as in many cases, we usually need supportive treatment for neonatal sepsis in form of monitoring of fluid balance, regular weighing of this uh, baby, temperature control, we need to avoid hyper or hypothermia. We need to calculate fluid and electrolyte. They may need fresh blood transfusion or, f or plasma, fresh frozen plasma. Also, they need oxygenation. Monitoring of hyperpilorobinemia is important because we mentioned that one of the manifestations of a neonatal sepsis is hyperbilirubinemia. And also, we have some other supportive treatment that are put under investigational therapies. Their rule is not confirmed 100%, but they can uh, be associated with uh, improvement of the immunologic or immunity of these units, like granulocyte transfusion, which uh, help in increasing function of a granulocyte. Uh, intravenous immunoglobulin also have role in the immunity. Exchange transfusion also was found to be effective in some cases of uh, neonatal sepsis. And uh, also recombinant cytokine administration uh, is uh, used as investigational therapy. Also, there are many uh, lines of prevention of sepsis. We will not talk about it. And if you uh, notice that uh, we concentrate on bacterial etiology rather than other causes of uh, infections are present in the unit out of this lecture, like viral or parasitic. Also, we concentrate in acquire on acquired rather than congenital because congenital need a special lecture. Uh, so, uh, at the end of this lecture, I want to thank you uh, for your listening and uh, I want to make you uh, aware that don't forget to answer the questions that are put in the beginning of the lecture. And if you know, if you want to know the references, uh, they were written here. Thank you.